and I know you're going to do great. So I'm going to, without further ado, pass you over to Jesse Lane of Branches Mission Line. Hey, everybody. I see lots of familiar faces. I'm trying to share my screen now. So is everybody able to see it? And give me a thumbs up or down. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Good deal. So um, looks like uh, we are kind of close to this big day. Uh, it's it's kind of scary, right? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's like this time of the year, I'm always thinking, oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's time to, to really start sprinting as April 8th is almost here. And so, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, we've been asking this year as a collective what's in your heart and we're inviting people to um, put uh, something in their heart maybe it's NWA Gives maybe it's a name maybe it's an, a date or a story or an organization maybe it's your organization so we encourage you to share this message as well uh, inviting people to kind of personalize a little bit why they give and talk about that and we think that's really a neat way to invite people into NWA Gives. And so we're actually gonna be releasing a new video I'm really excited about. Uh, we've done a, a video the last couple of years, thanks to Intercut Studios and the video this year is a little bit different and we're gonna send this message out, what's in your heart. Last year's video got shared over a thousand times and it had over a quarter of a million views uh, here in Northwest Arkansas alone where we were targeting it. So uh, I just wanna encourage you when you see the video, cause you probably will, on our post or whatever, share it, uh, promote that, get it out there. People uh, really rally around this day. And, and then of course, on the big day, we're gonna see lots and lots of this, lots of hands with NWA Gives, lots of hands with new things in it as well as we invite that in. And I love the creativity we saw last year. As you can see, we have NWA Gives on horses hooves and on dancers feet and on kids and uh, grandparents and you know medical professionals and it was everywhere and so so fun to see that and I feel like this year it's going to be even to the next level and so get creative with this uh, have fun I love seeing that and some of uh, you all even won some prize money because you were so creative so love that and I wanted to also remind you of our virtual rally which is the Tuesday before uh, NWA Gives, it'll be April 6th, it'll be at noon. So it's the same uh, schedule we've been on Tuesdays at noon uh, for a webinar, but we're gonna instead just have some fun, hopefully um, really give some last minute reminders and celebrate and get some screenshots for the media <laughs> and uh, wishing we could be in person, but this one will be virtual again on, on April 6th. Okay. Now into the topic for today, giving day execution. And I want to just invite you to chat. I'm going to ask a few questions throughout. I want to hear from you on where you're at as you are preparing these final weeks. Um, but real quick, I want to introduce myself in case you don't know me. So Branches Mission Lab, our company, we help nonprofit good makers. And we call you all good makers because you're out there making good happen in the world. And so we uh, help you tell your story to the masses and raise more funds faster. And uh, I uh, me and my team created this course, The Marketing Anatomy of a Growing Nonprofit, which I know several of you are already en enrolled in. And uh, I'm also a girl dad, and I have to show photos every time. I got some new ones. I'm really excited about the Razorbacks right now, so I found some photos of my girls calling the hogs. And uh, these are our three little piggies that are all big Razorback fans. And um, so anyway, we're pretty stoked about the March Madness coming up, my, my uh, seven-year-old especially. So she's all about it. They've all got brackets. Uh, so it's going to be fun. So let me ask you this. On a scale of one to five, how on track do you feel for interview gifts? I want to take a temperature here. Get your pulse. How are you feeling? Uh, be honest. It's okay. I know there's going to be some ones out there that are like, I just registered yesterday. Um, but I'd love to see in general where people are at. Three, two, three, four, three point five. Love that, Jenny. <laughs> two, maybe three, two, three. Okay. Zero. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Two and a half, one, all right. Okay, so I expected that. Uh, we don't have a lot of fives coming in, so that's okay. Uh, it's not too late. I wanna encourage you that today, what is it? March 16th, it is not too late to have a really successful day. You're gonna have to sprint. It's not gonna be easy, but it's not too late. And uh, you've got a lot of work to do. 
and you're going to need to focus on it for the next few weeks. And you're thinking, I'm going out of town for spring break. <laughs> How am I going to do that? Um, but uh, you don't have a lot of time, but it's, it's not too late to, to still have a good day. And I want to encourage you to, to really dedicate some time over the next few weeks. And I'm going to share some specifics on how to do that. Um, I'm also curious, how many webinars have you watched live or recorded so far? Just curious uh, if you guys have been here. This is number six, so you can count that if you've been to all of them. Uh, is it one, two, three? Is this your first one? Seeing some ones? Okay, yeah, four. Way to go, Catherine in Virginia. Uh, okay, Jamie, all right, five. That's awesome, first one. So we've got a few who, I figured that. I see several ones on there. So, um, and because I know that sometimes we need reminders, so even for those of you who've been on five, I'm gonna share some recap today, some refreshers. And for those of you who have, oh, this is your first one, this will be really uh, extra helpful because we're gonna recap some things. So. This is kind of my quick agenda here. We're gonna recap and then we're gonna talk about execution. The recap is gonna cover some of what I think is most important about the next few weeks and then um, do some Q and A toward the end. So if you have questions, write them down, think about uh, you know, how we can um, answer any questions you have during the end and then $100 will be awarded for those who stay to the end. I wanna tell you a quick story though and I, uh, I'll go ahead and confess, I made this story up completely. It's not a real story at all. In fact, it's a story about the future uh, and it starts today. Two of you are on this webinar right now and there's two NWA nonprofits I wanna tell you about. So the first one, uh, you know, left this and, and posted on social media twice between now and April 8th. They stuck NWA gives in the newsletter. It was one of like six things, you know, they had a lot to tell people about. Um, they barely mentioned it at a board meeting, but they did mention it at a board meeting. And, uh, you know, we're hoping the board would just run with it. They didn't. Uh, they had a couple of meetings already scheduled on April 8th about other things completely. So they really kind of had a busy day, not a, didn't really have a lot of time for NWA Gives that day. And they raised $450 uh, through NWA Gives Day. And then their feedback to us and, next, and to everyone else was that they're really frustrated by the results. This happens every year. And um, I just wanna let you know that if you don't put the time, the effort in, and I'm talking more than two social media posts and sticking it in a newsletter, you're not gonna get fantastic results. And maybe for some of you, you're will be thrilled with $450 and that's great. But for some of you, you have the potential to raise tens of thousands of dollars on this day if you put in the work. And so I wanna, um, Put that out there. So what about the other nonprofit? So some of you, you've scored a two today, maybe a one or a three, but you're saying I'm committed in the next few weeks, I'm going to, I'm going to catch up and it's not too late for you. And so some of you, you said you left today, you made a schedule for your email uh, list that you're going to send out. You made a schedule for social media that how you're going to creatively talk about NWA gives in different ways, hitting it from different angles, inviting people into the story, sharing stories, and then you got your board to give a match. Even if it was a small match, you got a match. Maybe it was um, you know, $2,000 match just to get momentum and their engagement and the board excited. And then you got your staff and volunteers to uh, plan April 8th as a text-a-thon. So they were all gonna spend an hour each on that day texting people to help uh, get the word out and remind people who want to give. And then you got an influencer, someone in Northwest Arkansas who has a big following and, and they said they would partner and share with you. So you're gonna do a live interview that day. Uh, you created a lot of content advance. You pre-wrote your emails in MailChimp. You pre-designed social media graphics for the day. You were ready to go. Um, and then you blocked out the whole day on April 8th just to focus on NWA gifts because you knew there would be a lot to do that day. That person left and raised $16,000. Now, again, this is a made up story, but this, again, we see happen every year for a handful that really go after it. And I wanna encourage you um, that you still have time to pull that off or even more. And then this person took a day off to celebrate and well-deserved day off, uh, maybe even a week. <laughs> All right, so I wanna give you guys some recap. On the very first webinar, uh, I presented this four-step plan and some of you have heard it a couple of times now, but in case it's your first webinar ever or you needed a refresher, these are the four steps I said, you got to be thinking about these. You got to craft your story and understand clearly what you're asking people to give to, make a plan. We'll talk about that a sec in a second. You need to activate your A team. 
Um, your A team is just those people that are already involved, already on board, already giving. And then you need to communicate clearly and constantly. That means a lot of communication because people need reminders. And then finally, radical gratitude. That sets you up for next year and every other giving campaign that you want to do. Um, and then this mindset of I'm committed to this and we're better together um, is, is really the, uh, the key here. So through it all, we want to be in this together. And so I'm going to go through several other things that are recap. Uh, I'm going to move quickly because, again, it's recap. But uh, if you have any specific questions about this, we can circle up at the Q&A. So I believe you should have two plans going into Be a Gifts. What, what's our fundraising plan, but also what's our impact plan? Fundraising plan is, can be straightforward. Uh, who are you asking to give? Who are you focused on? When will you fundraise? For this day, it's pretty obvious. Uh, where are you going to make the ask? Is it social, email, a video? Where will the funds go? And what is your goal? You need to be able to answer these questions. Um, hopefully, some of you already have a goal. I'm curious, actually, if you're willing to put in your goal for the day, put it in the chat. If you have a goal for how much you hope to raise that day, or if you say, I don't have a goal yet, let us know that. But I'm, I would encourage you all to set a goal, uh, even if it's you decide for various reasons to hide that on pure charity, which I don't necessarily recommend. Um, but I would at least have an internal goal at a minimum. Okay, so I'm seeing a $5,000 goal. Great, thanks for sharing, Virginia. If you have a goal, let us know. Thinking 10,000, considering being very brave and going for 15, love it, be brave, <laughs> you can do it. 25,000, woohoo, love that, great, that's an awesome goal. I'm, so I'm encouraged to see that you guys have already set goals um, and some of you uh, maybe aren't and you're being quiet, but I wanna say set a goal. Okay, impact plan. Who will be impacted by this? So you need to be able to communicate that throughout the day, right? This money, this 15,000, 5,000, this is going so that we can do what? And if you can answer the who, when, the where, what for, uh, and then how much uh, you know, work time and impact is expected, like the details around that, people are gonna believe you. They're gonna say, oh wow, they're actually gonna use my money and go do something tangible That'll, that's gonna have impact. And that tangible concrete impact is changes everything. People get excited to give to that because they imagine in their head, I'm gonna give and it's gonna turn into this actual thing, this bed for someone or this new building or this program that I can imagine in my head. If you can't answer these questions, people are gonna feel like they're giving a drop in a bucket uh, to some bank account that they don't quite understand what you do. So you need an impact plan specific to NWA Gives. I mentioned your A team already. Uh, your A team has got to be involved. These are people that are already uh, giving, already uh, engaged. And so your board, your staff, your volunteers, past donors and sponsors, existing relationships with corporations, these are opportunities to, they're easy wins, right? They already love what you do, they know what you do, and you, you need to get them involved first uh, and get them to bring momentum to the day, okay? So that um, you've already got some wins in your favor when the day comes. So this is your A team. And by the way, if you haven't already, I know several of you have, we have a worksheet to help you um, identify your A team. And it's just at this link here, brancheslab.com slash NWA. It's a part of a kit of three things I'll tell you about today. And you can get all of those at this link. And uh, hopefully that'll just help you, you know, take some action fast. And I, um, I always wanna say, if you can kick off your individual gifts campaign with a board match, it's my all time favorite way to start because it shows your board's engaged, it gets momentum and matching money is like magic. It motivates everybody. So I wanna encourage you to talk to your board about that. And my, if they've never done that before, it might feel scary, but even a small board match can make a big impact. So maybe start with your, you know, the chairman of your board or someone that's super engaged, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, dream up a way to approach the rest of the board uh, and together uh, approach your board about a match. Like I said, um, mat matching money is like magic, you know, it, it motivates everybody. So get your board involved. If your board's not going to make an, uh, a matching gift, maybe you get some major donors or those mid-level donors from um, your A team that have given in the past. Maybe it's corporate sponsors. Maybe, and I know uh, Freedom 5-1 does this every year and they do a great job, 
they set a little bit of a lower minimum and say, hey, anybody can be in this matching pool. All you have to do is give $500 in advance or commit to that and we'll make you a matching partner. So they gather lots of people a part of this matching pool. And what a cool way to build momentum and help people feel like they're giving a strategic gift and strategic gifts are exciting for people. Uh, by the way, we do have a board engagement mini course, just a little plug for this. It's brand new. So if your board's not super engaged and you're thinking they'll never help me fundraise or give, uh, you might need this. So let me know. Uh, I can tell you more about that. I also want to remind you that the confused mind always says no. And so when you're in your messaging, in your emails, in your social media, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it concise. People um, don't necessarily speak your language when it comes to jargon at the organization and all the phrases that you use. So keep it simple, uh, demonstrate you know, the impact you're gonna have, but don't confuse people with too much uh, jargon, too much language inside our baseball, keep it simple. And also wanted to remind you that people need to hear something seven to 14 times before they're gonna take action. And so, if you're just posting on social media two or three times, or if you're just sending one email, it's not enough. People need to be reminded uh, in this busy, loud world we live in, we need reminders. We need to see it a few times before we take action. And action obviously is what you want. So you can have people see your social media post or like it, and that doesn't go so far in hitting your fundraising goals. And so what you need is people to take action. And with that, you're gonna have to, they're gonna have to hear it a few times. Uh, I already mentioned this, but if your social media is not a part of a bigger system, you might be wasting your time on it. And I shared this, we, we did a whole session on social media. I encourage you to check out the recording if that's something you need to grow in. Um, but uh, if it's not a part of a bigger system, it's not going to do much on its own. On the other hand, I believe email marketing is the most, in, uh, most effective way to drive donations. And so a lot of people, they're focused on social media, they're not doing anything with email. And I wanna encourage you, do not neglect email. And uh, I think you'll be glad you didn't. And over time, as you grow your email list, it can be a really huge source of fundraising revenue. Um, and so I laid out in, in the last webinar, this basic system, social media, website, email, right? Take people from social media to your website. Maybe it's an article or a blog post or a video on your website. And then from the website, get them to sign up for your email list and then use your email to drive action. I know this is a lot. I'm still kind of in recap mode going fast. The other thing that we all probably need a reminder is it's okay to communicate more during campaigns. And so you may be thinking, gosh, I don't wanna spam people with so many emails uh, too much on social media. But on that day, especially on April 8th, people are going to just uh, have a lot of grace because they know it's an exciting big day for you and it's okay to communicate a lot during that day. They know that April 9th, April 10th, it's going to fade out pretty quickly. So people are going to have grace. They're not going to be too bothered by it. So don't be afraid to ramp up your communication, even in the week before, multiple emails, posting on social media, getting people reminded because again, it takes seven to 14 times. And so I would encourage you to ramp that up now, start to send more communication and build up to that day. And I also want to, to highlight this, some of you are aware of this, but this email strategy is, if I could just give you one piece of advice of this whole webinar, it might be this thing, is use this email strategy. Um, and I would say you need to follow the this to a T because you get it, I got it, I'll just say, I got an email this week from a nonprofit that it looks like they tried to use the strategy but they missed it just a little bit because the first thing I saw was, um, you know, click here to view this email in uh, uh, your browser, which immediately helped me realize this was sent to a mass uh, list. It was sent to a lot of people, right? You don't put those in your personal emails, but they stripped it off. They had no images. They had all, and it was a personal letter. It was so close, but I knew before I even opened it that it was a mass email. And so what you wanna do is make this, uh, take all of that HTML code out of it, take all the images out and keep it super personal uh, from a person, not a, from a logo or an organization, a short informal subject line. And if you're thinking, uh, can, you, 
can you slow down or unpack that? We have a guide for this in that kit I told you about, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions to sending this email. I would recommend you mix these emails into your branded, well-designed emails. Um, you can send both. And I would say this is probably gonna be the most effective in driving donations. And I would say maybe you send two or three of these during the campaign, um, but feel free to mix it in with your uh, branded uh, HTML emails. So if you want more on this, download the kit. Again, I highly recommend this. Uh, one of my past clients, they use this for, or actually multiple have, but use this for giving days and just were blown away. This was the thing that had the most impact on their results is that they sent emails like this and they actually got people to open and read and click on them because they were focused, simple, personal messages. Okay, um, so I also wanted to kind of, one of the last things is remind you that your response to a donation is literally more important than how you ask for one. And that's because you're potentially raising much more funds in the future based on how you respond, showing people you noticed it, showing people that you're grateful. So we talked a little bit in the first webinar about this, but retaining donors, deepening engagement by saying thank you in a creative ways, maybe go beyond the thank you note this time, um, making people feel noticed, showing that their gift actually mattered to your organization, demonstrating that there was impact. Uh, share those stories. There's nothing more exciting to, for a donor than to see the story that happened because of a gift. And then just stay in touch throughout the year. So I don't just mean the one time thank you. I'm talking about throughout the year, communicating impact and staying in touch. And if it seems like a lot, it doesn't have to be. Um, aim for three thank you touch points in the first three months. So that, that is a way, a, a good rule of thumb. Maybe the first one's immediately that day. Maybe the next one's that later that week. And maybe three months later, you circle back with an email and just say, just wanted you to know that we're continuing to see impact because of the gift you gave on NWA Gives Day. Um, in the last webinar, we talked about sick trick for social media success. So I'll quickly recap that. We talked about being social, being intentional, and being consistent. And how the SIC, the social, intentional, consistent, is a formula. No matter what happens on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of it, this applies. Okay. And um, the reason you need to be social is because people engage with pe people, not organizations. Um, and so what does that mean exactly? It means liking and commenting on other people's posts from your organization, tagging people, responding to comments, using real photos whenever possible, not just stock photos, and then telling stories. And I wanted to take a second to give some shout outs because you guys are already doing it. And I wanted to, um, to say good job. Today, New Beginnings NWA posted this, and I love this. They used a lot of the things we've been talking about. Real photo, they used the hand with something written inside. Uh, Mary Beth's hand says hope equals uh, change, hope equals change. So I love that. She's inviting people to do the same thing. It's personal because her own name and email address is in the post. And then she, they're asking people to sign up for a text reminder, which is what I think is the best call to action right now. So um, really great job. Uh, so, uh, you know, trophy for, for new beginnings, way to go, gold star. Who else? Um, family network. You guys are doing great. You've already uh, are crushing it out there. And I love this recent post because um, it's a story in a concise image. There's a, there's photography and a quote. So within a couple seconds, I'm getting a whole story and I love the quote. I love it all. And so great job. You uh, get the award for storytelling. And then Freedom Five Ones always doing a great job, but I love this post because it's not it's not a designed post. They didn't use Canva. They just used a photo of real people that support uh, the organization and the family, and they've got the hearts on hand, so it's connecting there. They talked about their matching gift up to twenty five thousand dollars, and that's such a great uh, invitation for people. Great job. <laughs> And then um, I also wanted to uh, give a, a trophy out to Restoration Village. I love the video that was created. It's a great custom uh, video that has, it's well-designed and it's kind of, it's moving and emotive and it and invites people to, to give uh, and it really demonstrates the impact. So great job. Okay. So I know some of you are getting started on social media, but I want to encourage you that at this point, you should be 
kind of talking about NWA gives at least weekly and ramping that up to daily probably um, on the week before. Then during the giving day, even more, you know, maybe even hourly post. You want to give people updates throughout the day. And so um, I want to, I'll talk about how to do that, but this is, this is important to ramp that uh, frequency up. In our other webinar, I gave lots of ideas on what kind of content you can post. And so if you're coming up with creative block, uh, here's some ideas for you. Take a screenshot. <laughs> this is uh, the blue ones are some ones I, I touched on, but these are just easy, lots of things you can do. Uh, just my point is get creative. Don't just post the NWA Gives logo every time and say, it's coming up 10 days away, it's five days away, it's three days. No, just get creative, talk, say something different. Um, let the call to action always be about NWA Gives, but come at it from different angles. And then speaking of call to action, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but we, we recommend, I recommend that your call to action leading up to April 8th is a text reminder, sign up for a text reminder. And the reason for that is um, because they can't give yet and be a part of the prizes and all that. And so of course, if they could be a matching donor, that would be even better. But um, if it's just your broad audience, so for email or social media, just say, hey, sign up for a text reminder. Um, and we'll send you a reminder on April 8th. And then um, switch over to give as the call to action on April 6th and 7th. And then of course on April 8th, it's now give now, click here, you know, and then of course the draw your heart on the hand is kind of a secondary thing. But primary for you guys is just getting them to uh, take action on that day. So just again, a little bit of a phased approach on calls to action. We hit on influencer marketing and I highly recommend if you know somebody or know somebody that knows somebody that has a big following or network. I was just uh, doing some research today on network, uh, or I'm sorry, on influencers for one of my other clients and we were making a list of influencers and I was just reminded that there are literally probably hundreds of influencers right here in Northwest Arkansas that have massive social media followings and they care about nonprofits. They care about this area. And so um, I would say make a list, contact those uh, people that you know, or, or even if you don't know them, reach out and see if they'll partner with you to share on end of your gift day. It's a fun day. Um, I think you'll get a yes from most of them. And if influencer marketing is new to you, uh, we also have a toolkit for that. You can get at brancheslab.com slash influencers. And it just gives you some tools to help you know how to approach an influencer, what to say, um, you know, uh, how it works, all of that. So feel free to go and download that as well. All right. So I wanted to pause and give you guys a pop quiz, which I always hated that in school. So sorry to be that guy. Um, but it's, hopefully this will be fun and not too, too painful, um, but we'll see. So I want to give you a little pop quiz and basically just ask you to rate yourself, give yourself some points as I ask some questions. And if you end this with zero points, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. But this is the question, this quiz is about how prepared are you for NWA Give? So if you have some scratch paper or if you wanna put it in the comments, you can kind of do the math, um, you play along. Hopefully this will help you kind of feel either better or realize that you need to urgently get to work. <laughs> so have you attended other webinars or the Better Together, which is on Thursday? So if you have, give yourself two points for each one. So if you've attended five webinars, that's 10 points. If you've attended five Better Togethers, or there hasn't been that many, I don't think, but like three Better Togethers and five webinars, um, you know, that's, that's a lot of points. Don't make me do the math. That's 16 points. So um, <laughs> have you set um, a dollar goal for NWA Gives? So I know several of you put that in there. Give yourself five points. Way to go. You have got a goal set. Um, Okay, so then can you clearly say the impact that will result from NWA Gives? Like if someone asks you right now, what, where's the money going? What's the impact that's gonna happen? Do you have an answer or is it kind of like a long, vague, kind of confusing response? If you do have a clear impact response, 10 points, that's important. Awesome. So is your board ready to get involved? If so, 10 points for you way to go. If they know what to do, if they're already committed, um, I'd say if all they do, uh, if maybe the, all they uh, 
are as aware of NWA Games, that's not really the same as ready to get involved. How are they helping? Are they going to give? Are they going to fundraise? Are they going to share or text people? Do you have matching funds? This is a big one. So if you have matching funds, 20 points, that's a great head start because you've got momentum toward your goal and you're gonna, people are going to be excited to give to that. So if you do, 20 points on that. Do you have influencer partners? If so, 10 points. That has a big potential. So we're gonna give you 10 points for that. Have you posted on social media yet? Um, if so, two points for each time. Each time you've mentioned NWA Gives on social media, give yourself two points. Great job. Have you sent an email yet? I would say emails are worth twice as much or more. So I'm gonna give you five points if you've sent an email that talks about NWA Gives. And I don't think you should, I'd give you like one point if it was one of like 10 things in your newsletter because that is going to, um, a lot less people are actually going to engage with each piece of your newsletter. So I'm thinking more about those focused emails that are just about NWA gifts or just about your campaign, which is impact or, you know, your goals. Have you sent in individual messages to top donors? So if so, great job. This is huge. So I would recommend that individual kind of A-team approach where you're contacting them saying, hey, just thank you so much for your gift earlier this year or last year. Um, I just wanted to let you know about NWA Gifts coming up. Um, we'd love for you to participate with the gift on that day. It's going to help us do X, Y, Z. If you've sent that kind of message out, 10 points per message. Maybe some of you have sent 50 of those messages out. And if so, you just got a ton of points and you win. But that is, that is a huge potential uh, opportunity. Have you blocked out April 8th on your calendar? That's an easy one. It takes five seconds. Block it out on your calendar. Two points. And uh, so if you've scored zero to 10 points here, you're way behind, but you're not out of the race. It's okay. Like, I just want to encourage you. But here's the warning. If you're still at a zero points this time next week, your time is going to be running out. It's going to be tough to catch up. Okay. If you wait another week or two and you haven't done any of these things, you're going to be too, too far behind to catch up. So 20, 10 to 30 points, you're a little behind, but it's okay. You can catch up quick. Uh, you can knock a few of these things out in the next week. If you just focus some time on it, block it out on your calendar, work on these things, you can catch up. 30 to 60, I'd say you're on track. You're about where you need to be. You're doing great. So just keep on going. And if you got over 60, you're crushing it. And you're, I would say, ahead of schedule, stay focused, and you're going to have an awesome day. So, um, so if anybody's willing to share in the chat, I'd love to see your scores. If you're proud of it, if anybody got over a 60, I'd especially love to see that because that would make my day. Um, if you, uh, if you got a low score, that, that's okay too, but just hopefully this was helpful, kind of fun. Wanted you to guys to think about where you're at, um, and where you need to be. All right. 52. Way to go, Becky. That's awesome. Virginia 47 solid scores. Okay. You guys are on track. Okay, so that's your recap. We did a little pop quiz. And the reason I spent a lot of time on that is because I knew we have people, this was their first webinar, people that just registered. Um, but also because giving to execution is, is pretty straightforward. It's not going to take a lot of time to hit on that. Um, because a lot of that work is happening uh, in advance. Uh, the day of should be pretty simple and not super stressful. So let's talk about it. On the day, on April 8th, um, you should actually be able to relax and do a few things because you work so hard in advance. And so this slide is about preparing in advance. And I think that there's a lot of little things you can do to make that day less stressful. And just think about this. What if you wake up that day feeling sick or there's some kind of family thing that goes wrong or something in your organization, there's a big fire to put out that, that you have to deal with and you put you plan on doing everything on that day, you're gonna be in trouble, right? And it's gonna be really sad to, to not be able to take advantage of it. And so I wanna encourage you to do a few things in advance so that that day is less stressful and, and if something does go wrong and you're sick, you're still prepared to execute. So here's a few things. Um, tech checks, I'm gonna go into each one of these in more detail, but tech, uh, check all of your technology to make sure things are working. Make sure your website is up to date and ready to point people to NWA Gives. Uh, make sure your emails are prepared. Social media is designed and written. Your text-a-thon, if you're doing a text-a-thon, is, is all uh, set and, and organized and that you even have some of your thank you plans in place so that you can move quickly to recognize and say thank you. 
So tech check, just a few things you might check. Um, I love that Carol said this at the beginning of the webinar. You should go ahead and do a test donation on your Pure Charity fundraiser. It's a great way to just make sure everything works and make sure everything goes well. There's no surprises. And then um, that also means you're the first donor. So way to go. You should be because that's showing buy-in. Um, and then go check out your dashboard and your data. Familiar, familiarize yourself with Pure Charity's uh, data and the, the once you log in and what you see, the donor information, if you've never uh, logged in, you need to, to get comfortable with it. Uh, and then also any links that you have on social media or your profile. I know that a lot of people do like LinkedIn profile on Instagram. So go ahead and have that ready and put that on there um, even the day before, the couple days before so that it's there. And then if you're using software to text people, which I know a few of you are doing that, um, make sure the software works. Do some tech, uh, some tests and actually send text to a small group of people yourself. Make sure it all works the way you expect it to because anytime you're using technology, there's always potential for something unexpected or something to not work. And so test it out in advance. Um, for your website, I don't think you have to do a lot. Two things that you could do is someone might read your email, they might hear about NW Gives, they might want to participate in your fundraiser, and then but then they just go to your homepage or they Google you, your website and they go to your homepage. Um, that's fine, but if you want them to actually help you win prizes that day or go to your total goal, then you need to send them over to your NW Gives link. So I highly recommend even now putting a big banner on your homepage that says. NWA gives, um, you know, coming up on April 8th, help us X, Y, Z, you know, change the world, whatever your impact is, and say, click here so they know exactly how to get to that fundraiser page. And so you might have one that's uh, information and then on the day or two before, you can change that to a click here and it sends them there. Some of you might even want to, uh, on your donate button or your donate page, redirect people to your um, face, or I'm sorry, to your NWA Gives fundraiser. Um, again, because that's gonna make you more uh, eligible for prize money, it's gonna help you hit your goal that everybody can see visibly. Some of you might be like, oh, wouldn't I rather them just donate to me directly? And maybe maybe that's what you want. I know that happens every year, um, but that number isn't gonna be visible on the leaderboard on nwagives.org. It's not gonna help you win prizes, doesn't count toward that. So if that is important to you, send people to uh, NWA Gives um, on your, your fundraiser page on that day. Okay. Um, and so by the way, the, it could be as simple as if you have a donate button, changing where that links people and sending them to that page that, and just do it for a day and then make sure to go change it back after that day. All right. Uh, preparing in advance your emails. Uh, I highly recommend you don't wait until the day of to start writing emails out because what'll happen is you'll only write one, maybe two, and um, they won't be as well written. They might have typos or you, you'll feel stressed trying to get it out. So in advance, pre-write out your emails. Maybe there's a couple blank spots that you have for, we've raised this much money so far, you know, or uh, thank you to X, Y, Z, and you're gonna fill that in on the day. But I would just say most of your emails can already be pre-written before, before April 8th. And so when the time comes, you just have to, edit and send, it's really easy. Um, I would encourage you to send, plan emails to send throughout the day. Uh, maybe there's four or five emails. Uh, maybe first thing in the morning, you know, the giving starts off at 8 a.m. That's when the prizes start. So I know a lot of people send emails right at 8 a.m. Maybe you wanna send them a little earlier, a little later, but it's up to you. You might wanna think about prize money and say, oh, there's a big prize at this time. I wanna focus on that. And that's the time I'm gonna send my emails. Uh, but I would, Communicate people with the updates throughout the day and remind them because again, maybe they see the email in the morning, but it's not a good time. They're in car rider line. And then at lunch, they're driving and they can't really go give right now. And they want to give, but they just keep forgetting. But maybe it's that last call email that you send at six o'clock or seven o'clock that makes them go, oh yeah, I, I don't want to miss this. I got to go donate right now before eight o'clock. So that's why multiple emails are helpful. Uh, pre-write those. And then I highly recommend one or two emails after NWA gives because we found that some people get 15, 20% more giving on April, on the day after NWA gives. So always send an email that next morning, say thank you and say, by the way, giving is still open. If you happen, if you missed it and you want to participate, probably what I would say is this story is amazing. 
people's lives are going to be changed. If you want to be a part of that story, it's actually not too late. Uh, you can click here. We're going to let you in on it for another day or two or whatever you want to say. And people will do that. They Maybe they were just too busy that day, but they wanted to. They'll still give. So send an email out that says thank you, and you can still give on April 9th and maybe another one on April 10th. Social media, again, design and write ahead of time. Uh, get your graphics ready, get your captions ready. I'm just trying to make that day stress-free for you. So have it ready in advance as much as possible. And then um, of course, if you want a big update, like we've raised uh, you know, 100,000 and five you know, dollars, then uh, you can plug that number in on the day. But in the meantime, uh, you can just have the template all ready to go. And then if you want to do live interviews, I love that, you know, going live on Facebook with a donor or uh, maybe you're doing it on Zoom and you're streaming that to Facebook. Uh, that's a great way to um, to engage with people throughout the day. So live interviews, go ahead and plan those out um, and say, hey, uh, I want to interview you, board member, donor, volunteer, uh, client who's been impacted. Let's do these fun little interviews live on Facebook and Instagram on April 8th. That's a great idea but plan ahead so that you're not scrambling for those. And then um, you're, if you're doing a text-a-thon, which is just what we call texting a lot of people on the day of, um, I, I think it's a great idea. Recruit the help you need to do that you know, in advance. Get your board now marking off the day so that at least for an hour or two, they can help you text people that ask for a reminder or even just their relationships and their contacts. Um, get volunteers involved, get staff involved. I love the organizations that um, they, they uh, block out a conference room or you know an area of a coffee shop and they have three or four people there and just they're camped out all day, texting people, calling people. That's a great way to spend the giving day. So um, get your phone numbers that you're gonna text organized and assigned. So as they come in and people ask for a text reminder, make sure you have a spreadsheet or something and assign people who's gonna text each number. So maybe the first 20, you know, Jesse's gonna text, the next 20, Mallory's gonna text, the next 20, you know, that kind of thing. And then you kind of have a plan and go ahead and draft two to three messages. And if they respond to the first one, you don't need to send them another one. But um, if, if they uh, aren't responding, if they're not giving, they asked for a reminder, I think it's okay to send them a second or even a third one throughout the day, uh, just to make sure they said they wanted to give that day, they might just need a reminder. So thank you plans. Okay, and then what's your game plan for saying thank you immediately? And the studies have shown that um, the timeliness of your thank you really matters. And so highly recommend you saying thank you in the first day or two. And so while you might get creative and do something down the road that's even bigger and better, um, have some simple way to immediately say thank you. And so one idea might be a tiered approach. You might say anybody that gives over a thousand dollars, I'm gonna make a personal video. There's a tool I love to use called Loom, L-O-O-M, um, that makes it really easy to make a video, send it off to someone and just personalize, personally say thank you. Maybe if they give between uh, 200 and 1,000, you're gonna just shoot them a quick email, just a personal email that says, hey, I just saw your gift come in. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I'm super excited to have you on board, you know, and hit send. And then uh, for everyone else, they're gonna get a mass email that, that evening or the next day saying thank you. All right, on the day. So the day of giving, um, I would, recommend focusing on just executing these things that we've talked about updating your emails sending them out updating your social media graphics posting them online responding to the comments responding to any questions you get an email responding to concerns or issues that might come up because they do um, and then of course of course sending this the text reminders uh the text -a -thon, getting those out focusing on that here and there throughout the day block out time for that and um, if you're a phone call type of person i know uh a, a few of you guys just love to pick up the phone and call people. That's a great, great thing to do. Call people that day and just say, I know you've given in the past. I just wanted you to know today's NWA Gives Day. Just making sure you didn't miss it. Leave voicemails, let people know, um, especially your A-team, people that are already involved. They're a fan. You're not going to offend them. They want to be a part in, in some way. Uh, they've already proven that. So remind them. 
And then, you know, keep your eye on the data, watch for your charities as it comes in. So you can say thank you to big gifts that come in so that you can kind of know how you're tracking. And then obviously start saying thank you to people immediately on that day. Um, and definitely the day after you want to focus on that. As far as your emails go, if you're wondering, what do I put in all those emails? He said to pre-write emails and he said to uh, send a lot of emails. Well, maybe on that day, you're just saying, hey, we've raised this much, here's our goal. Maybe you're sharing about the prize money saying, hey, this today is, or I'm sorry, this hour is a power hour. We can win a big prize, go donate now. Uh, maybe you're going ahead and sharing impact stories, you know, like reminding people of the impact. It's always good to point people back to the impact. Um, maybe you're sharing photos from people that have made the, the heart on their hand and they're posting about it. So I grabbed this screenshot from, uh, I think it was, I uh, can't remember, but um, it, they, uh, they posted this on social media and it's pictures of people with hearts on the hand and they're uh, sharing about NWA Gives. And I love it because you're like, oh wow, people, you see that and you're like, oh, people are actually doing this. Social proof, right? It, it gets people excited. And so send those out in your email, send those out on your social media, repost it. Um, and then here's another example uh, of that same type of thing, uh, but on social media, Seven Hills posted this, and this was last year, they showed, you know, people doing the heart, and you see that, and again, you think, oh, wow, people are doing this, I want to do this too, I want to be a part of that community, I want to be a part of this story, and so on social media, I love live video updates, uh, Joe Butler did a great job of this the last couple of years, if you want to scroll back on Ability Truth's Facebook page and see some examples, um, he posted throughout the day, tons of times on Facebook, just sharing fun updates. And he would be goofy and fun and silly and share updates and invite people to give. And it was always interesting, and, uh, but it also reminded people to go give. Uh, and then interviews with donors and clients. Again, I mentioned that. It's a great content for social media. Share the amount raised versus your goal. Give updates throughout the day. Repost NWA Gives content. We'll be sharing content throughout the day obviously, and some updates, and that's fun, and share that, get, uh, it's, it gets people excited to see the momentum that all together we've raised a certain amount, and then repost your donor and your fan post. I think that's one of the coolest things you can do, because if they're tagging you and they're posting, definitely want to reshare that, because again, it brings social proof. So all in all, prepare in advance so that you can be <laughs> the one on the right, not the left. Um, if you remember my stories, and I think preparing in advance and starting now on everything is your best bet to have success that day. And so uh, on the day, there's definitely work to be done. I would block it off. But if you put all your eggs in that basket um, and that day you're sick or something goes wrong, you're going to be in trouble. So I really encourage you to get your team involved so that it's not just dependent on you. Get your board involved, get volunteers, get a few people to help you and then prepare in advance so that you're celebrating with confetti um, on Individual Gifts Day. Okay, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions you guys have. So, hey, Jesse. Yes. Just going to ask everyone who hasn't already put their name and their organization into the chat to do that now so that I can have your name for the drawing so you can win $100. So just a little quick reminder to go ahead and do that and then back over to you. Thank you. So yeah, definitely do that. Don't miss out on the chance to win the hundred dollars, but what questions do you have? Put them in the chat um, or unmute yourself if you want, want to be bold. And I'd love to do my best to answer any questions. I have a question. Hey, Audrey. Hey, um, so you mentioned keeping, you know, everything simple, like communication simple, so it's not confusing. How do you, how do you suggest managing like um, the different like prize money opportunity, prize <laughs> after money opportunities, and like if we're incorporating a match, and like if we're incorporating giveaways, it's starting to feel like, oh my gosh, there's like so much. How do we keep it simple so that people aren't just like bombarded with different opportunities? Yeah, that's great. Well, I think you have to remember that um, certain, uh, only a small percentage of people will see everything you post. You see everything, right? <laughs> because you're the one doing it. 
And so you're thinking about all the 10 things you're saying. And, um, but I would say it's important to have um, kind of a hierarchy of priority communication. So maybe you have three levels and you say, we wanna, this is our core message. And that's where you really wanna keep it simple. And you wanna say that everywhere. And it's, it's the key thing, you know, we're raising this much money on April 8th for this, co for this you know, impact. That's the core message. Repeat that everywhere, right? Everybody needs to hear that multiple times. And then the next level up could be, you know, uh, an impact story that you want to share a few times or something else that's pretty important. And then maybe at the highest level, it's uh, not as often and not as prominent, but it's um, a, a giveaway or a, um, a prize, prize money or something like that. Now, I'm not saying a giveaway or prize money isn't important. I'm just saying, for example, maybe that is the big thing you're focused on. But I would say prioritize so that you don't have too many messages and because that's definitely a risk for sure. And then uh, kind of rank them, like which ones are priority. And if it's, if it's not that important, but you kind of want to mention it, uh, maybe it gets one social media post, but it doesn't take up space in your emails. It doesn't get repeated over and over again. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of what you have to do is prioritize uh, and then and definitely simplify. You probably can't focus on every prize that we give at NW Gives, or that'll just clutter up your communications and maybe confuse people. So uh, I know that's difficult. I think that's one of the hardest things is when you have so much in your head that you could say so many things, simplifying it down and keeping it concise takes a lot of work and uh, it is difficult and a lot of, I think, discipline to say, this is the thing we want to repeat over and over again um, and maybe not say all the other things we could potentially say. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful or not. It's definitely, I would say preparing in advance helps because you can kind of craft that message and edit it and simplify it and, uh, over, over a few days versus just all in the moment. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully that helps, good question. Uh, what other, okay, I'm trying to see if I, there's any in the chat. There's a few things that came in. Um, that's a good practical question, Carol, in the chat, if you could answer, answer Darren's about the Pure Charity Fundraiser page. I think you do need a new one, but. Yes, if you had a Pure Charity Fundraiser page last year, you still have to do a new one. You can go into your account though, um, and just click create a new fundraiser and you should be able to do it pretty quickly. Just a reminder though, that after you have created it, you do have to copy the URL and then paste it into the form at the bottom of our page on NWA Gives, the same page where it gives all the instructions way down at the bottom. You have to put it in there. Also, just a quick mention that people have been getting confused because your information stays there, but at the bottom it says, thank you. <laughs> so people have been thinking that it hasn't gone through, but if you see that thank you, it is done and you have done it correctly. Okay. Any other questions for me? Um, I have a question. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm a, I work for Question Bridges. And I'm kind of doing like a one man solo team for this entire thing. So it seems a little daunting and overwhelming. Um, and my boss has really great ideas. I love it. But is there a certain amount of campaign strategies you would suggest for this? Like one's too many. I know you were saying earlier, keep it kind of like stupid simple, which is really good for communication wise. Um, but she just has a lot of good ideas of like, you know, like with doing a whole series on like our volunteers and then having them also do the hand and sharing it along with, you know, doing, we have our horses. So having our horses have their painted hooves with you know, the NWA gives and then do testimonials on top of that, um, do written in videography. Um, would you say that's too much and too complicated or a good amount? Or I said, yeah. no, if you thought, you know, there's too many campaign strategies and everything. Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I love all those ideas. And of course, I'd love for y'all to do it all. But if you're one person focused on doing all of this yourself, and you just have limited time, um, you want to make sure that you're not spending all your time doing lots of things that don't actually help move the needle, right? And so I think one of the things I would do if, if we were together and I was uh, trying to consult you, I would ask a lot of questions like, what are, your, what are your kind of almost like a SWOT analysis? What are your strengths and weaknesses? So if you only have a few social media followers, 
you could have the best social media content ever and it wouldn't matter because there's only a few social media followers. If you have a big email list, focus on that. You know, if you have big, uh, big time board members with lots of connections, then focus on your board and making sure they're sharing, right? Like where are your strengths and do that because no matter, um, how creative or, or cool ideas you have, if it's not actually going to reach a lot of people, it doesn't matter. Right. And so you need to be able to get in front of people. You need to be able to, uh, you know, actually motivate them to give, not just think, oh, that's cool. Um, and so I think you kind of have to ask hard questions about that. Maybe simplify your campaign so that uh, you're focused on the right things. Um, and so it's tough. I know you guys have participated in the past though, right? Yeah, we have. It wasn't, um, I think it was like right near when COVID was hitting. So I don't yeah, think right. it was quite uh, the, yeah. the focus at the time. Yeah, sure. Uh, but we're trying to regroup and everything like that. Yeah. So um, I just want to make sure, I was an advertising and public relations major. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm not yeah. over overdoing it or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, well, okay. I love all of that. And I think it's it's really creative. If you can pull it off, great. But I wouldn't do that at the expense of neglecting major donors or board members or email or whatever that you might do. I would do kind of a little bit of all of it versus just one thing and focusing all on social media, for instance. Um, but yeah, I think I love the creativity and I think it will stand out if you, if you do some of those things. Um, but it also may be a lot of work for a little bit of <laughs> results. Thank you. Good question. So we have a question about the best contact um, for questions. So um, just to clarify for everyone, if you're asking for help with your web page, that really is pure charity. So the help at nwagives.org email, I think is going to them. Um, or if anyone is doing leah.martin at purecharity.com, that's where all your technical questions about my date isn't working. Where do I find my URL? You know, anything to do with your web page, you can send it to them. If you have questions about your strategy or how things work on April the 8th or anything that is to do with NWA gives or training, fundraising, that all comes to me. And that's just carol at nwagives.org. So hopefully that clarifies that question. Anybody have anything else? No. Wow. Then my famous hot is uh, now coming into play here. So hopefully everyone has put their name in. And well, look at that. We have Alana from Equestrian Bridges. So, yay, thank you. You awesome. are welcome. I think in the chat, someone just asked something else. Oh, there you go. Someone put my yeah, email. We got it. All right. Does anyone have any more questions? No, then I encourage you all to show up on Thursday with any questions or problems that you might be having with our Better Together session. It's usually really small, like a handful of people and you get personal attention and I will solve all your problems with you. All right, that's it. Thank you to Jesse and we'll see you again next week. Thank you guys. All right.